what is the like a key advice that you would give uh, as an entrepreneur? Be in love with um, with with the problem, not with your solution. It's super important to go for a purpose, and the money will take care of uh, itself. And also take your time to 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 understand your target audience. Right? Um, there's a great book called The Mom's Test uh, by Rob Fitzpatrick. And that tells you how to go through that process of understanding um, the pinch points of, of your target audience and, and how to help them. So, Adria, how does someone go from brewing beer to founding a startup in the construction industry? Yeah, it's a long and winding road, really. But uh, maybe I can start one step before brewing beer. It's the reason I went into brewing beer was basically my disappointment with the big corporate world, right? Uh, Ten years ago, even um, the uh, CMO of the company I was working for was still selling things like, oh, we need to sell more stuff to more people for more money more often. Uh, And you think, come on, surely there's something else out there, right? (laughs) So I wanted to have a bit of a positive impact in the world. And uh, the beer that we we still make uh, at Crumbs Brewing uh, is made out of bread that would go out uh, to waste. So using the circular economy uh, there, um, it, it has a purpose, it beer with a purpose, right? And I went on to help then after that. Uh, making beer is a, is a tough industry, by the way. <laughs> it, it's very competitive. Everybody and their neighbor in 2016 or 17, when we started, had, 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 had a, a, a microbrewery or a, or a craft <laughs> brewing company or something like that. Um, so it's a tough world. Uh, and it was difficult to scale it up, but now it's kind of a good kind of lifestyle business for my co-founder and his wife. I've still got some shares and uh, and, and still keep uh, keep on involved, but not on the day to day anymore. Uh, but th- oh, from then, I went on to help other companies. Uh, we did a very successful crowdfunding campaign with 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 a beer company. Uh, I did another one for charity, uh, and and people started asking me, "How do you do crowdfunding?" And and I helped quite a few companies with that. Um, and some of those companies ask me a bit more than just doing the crowdfunding, but but getting a bit more hands-on involved. Uh, um, and all of them usually uh, were, were with the ones I, I got involved with that were the ones that, that, that went for that impact, right? So I spent two years, for example, as the first employee of Polytac working on the packaging circular economy. And then, yeah, the opportunity to join Carbon 13, that we can talk about Carbon 13 a bit more if you want, uh, came up. Um, so that's when I started uh, um, my company in the construction industry, really, uh, as part of that process. Mm-hmm. Nice. And um, you mentioned Carbon 13, so you may as well ask, where else yeah. did that uh, derive from? So Carbon13 is a venture builder, uh, which means that they're putting together co-founders, uh, some of them more with a technical uh, angle, some of them more with a commercial angle. I was there as a commercial co-founder. Um, and uh, we were in the fourth cohort, so it's so still quite a relatively new venture builder based in Cambridge. And the main objective that, that it has, that venture builder, is to create companies that can tackle the climate emergency. Um, so the target that each one of those companies need to show that they can tackle is 10 million tons of CO2 per year. So I went there maybe thinking that I would be working on, uh, on, on food or on biodiversity or even on packaging, something that I've done before, yeah. and uh, ended up talking a lot with my co-founder who was really keen on, uh, on building off-site construction uh, homes, really. So, um, so yeah, um, that, that's where it started, really. All right. Cool. So you sound like an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, so based on the, all of these various uh, types of experiences you had, what is the like a key advice that you would give uh, as an entrepreneur to people? So there, there's several things that, uh, we could mention here. One is that be in love with the um, with with the problem, not with your solution, right? Uh, because, for example, for Carbon 13, having that ambitious 10 million tons of CO2 per year, um, we we started thinking, oh, why don't we build homes using off-site construction methods, right, or modern methods of construction? 
um, and then realize we need to build 160,000 homes per year to get to the 10 million tons of CO2 <laughs> per year. So, so not even the government can uh, not even, target, yeah, yeah pretty like much hexed out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, 10 times Barrett homes, uh, probably <laughs> not, 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 not in our lifetime, probably not. And um, so that's when we pivoted more. And okay, if if we want to tackle the climate emergency in the construction industry, we take, need to take a role more of facilitator, right? So, so the problem was clear: decarbonizing. The industry, but but then you come in with a more of a role of facilitator. Um, again, you know, for me, uh, we were talking about it just before we we started recording. But uh, it's super important to go for a purpose, and the money will take care of uh, itself. Um, and also, take your time to 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 understand your target audience. Right? Um, there's a great book called The Mom's Test uh, by Rob Fitzpatrick. And that tells you how to go through that process of understanding um, the pinch points of, of your target audience and, and how to help them. Um, another thing that, that, that we've been doing a lot is to iterate super fast uh, and show it to the target audience. Once we have identified those pinch points, um, start showing things to our customers, right? Um, mm -hmm. And we did that because neither my co-founder or I were technical and we have a CTO in the team, but he's only part-time. Um, we used a lot of low-code tools, uh, especially one called Noodle, uh, and a lot of ChatGPT, really, uh, <laughs> uh, to, to do can't our prototype. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't avoid it. And, and that was our first hire we always joke about, right? <laughs> it's paying him 20 quid, uh, uh, 20, yeah. him or her, $20 a month. That, that's a bargain. <laughs> insane right? value. <laughs> yeah, 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 insane value. Um, so we're now testing that thing that we've put together uh, with Noodle and, and, and ChatGPT mainly uh, with a selection of developers. Um, and, and another thing as well, it, it's incredible how much people are keen to help. Um, so, so don't be shy to ask for favors, right? Um, especially at the beginning, people are keen to help. And, and, and related to that, it's very, very true that old ad, ad age uh, that says, ask for investment and you'll get advice. I'd ask advice and you get investment. And in mm -hmm. fact, two of those early uh, people that we were asking advice for are becoming one of our people in, in our um, angel round, basically. So, so that's 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 very true. Cool. And and are there any like obviously you've worked in, in, with quite a diverse background in different industries, and you mentioned that you thought you would be working in something like food or diversity or packaging, mm -hmm. and construction took you took you. Yeah. Um, but are there any insights from the other industries that you have found? that you can that can be relayed into construction specifically and bonus points if you can relate uh um beer brewing <laughs> oh dear beer brewing is gonna be a, a big bonus point but it's almost a cliche and, and everybody mentions it but the uh construction industry is behind in many respects to other industry um things like the circular economy for example okay uh, there, there you are. There's, there's the analogy with my beer brand. Uh, <laughs> we were using bread that would go into into waste to do uh, to, 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 to 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 do our beer. You could probably use some waste products to do material construction materials, really. Um, and there's a few very interesting companies that we're engaging with that are doing a bit of that as well. Um, but things like sustainability, the industry lags behind massively. Um, a lot of the manufacturing principles that have been around for 100 years plus uh, with, with the 4T, right, have not been applied to the construction industry either. Um, but even at a more ba basic level, just uh, the level of digitization of, of, of the whole industry lags behind many other industries, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, uh, Adria, so let's chat about Hesti. So Hesti is your latest venture whose mission is to remove the barriers to modern method of construction <laughs> called MMC. Uh, and this is to reduce the carbon impact on buildings and operating homes. So can you explain what MMC, uh, MMCs are and how you want to reduce the carbon impact uh, on homes that we live in? So at Hesti, we go with the MMC definition of framework, uh, which was created by CAS Consultancy together with Homes England and HBC, RICS and a few others. Um, it's not very well understood outside of the UK, but it's becoming a bit of a standard in the UK. So this definition framework has seven categories of MMC from category one, which is uh, 3D volumetric, 
um, these big boxes on the back of a lorry to category two, which is a structural systems like panels, uh, 2D structural systems like panels. And then you go to other categories like 3D printing, even down to category seven, which are process-led site labor reduction sort of, of things, right? Um, and another important concept that the framework introduces is pre-manufactured value, PMV, which is a percentage of how much of the value of the home is produced in a factory as opposed to on-site, right? Um, so, so, so we're looking at that. We're focusing on categories one and two for the moment, so, so volumetric and, and panels, and yeah. pushing PMV as much as we can. The reason why we do it that with our no start of decarbonizing the industry is that um, MMC has a lot of advantages versus conventional or traditional construction on that front, right? Uh, from the use of materials that you can to less waste, for example, and producing very, very efficient homes. A lot of the people that are going for kind of passive house standard homes use a lot of off-site manufacturing for that reason, um, just to make sure that the houses are tight, uh, airtight, and, and there, there, there are no um, thermal bridges, things like that, right? So, so, so yeah, that's, that, that's why we, we have the, the hunch that MMC has a, a big, role to play on decarbonizing the whole the whole industry mm -hmm. and do you think that um like modular construction um volumetric construction is like where do you think we are in the cycle because we spoke to people in here that have worked in it for like 20 years I and mean, there's obviously more hype around it as of recently and obviously you guys attack like on a startup venture to to uh tackle that in some respects do you think we're adopting it well or, or uh room for improvement uh, from our experience to visiting quite a few of the big guys in uh, in in category one, um, they're still startups, which is quite surprising, right? They're, they're still burning through a lot of cash uh, right. and a lot of cash from, from Homes England as well, some of them, um, so public money. Um, and it's because um, there's still a lot of questions about how you produce volume at a at a very efficient and in a very efficient way, right? Um, and the proof is in the pudding as well that just last week, LNG, one of the big guys that were doing volumetric category one homes, um, decided to close their factory, right? Uh, relaying 450 people. So it's still a tough, tough industry. Um, there's quite a lot of people that, that are uh, betting hard on category two uh, uh, panels because they are more they have some advantages as well um, you can flat pack them you can transport them much more efficiently you're not transporting air when you transport them you don't have to have that they don't have to be structurally sound to kind of um, crane them in and out of places right um so so so, so category one has a big big role to play as well um having said that you know that there, there, there are uh, there is money from the government. The government is, uh, Homes England especially, is quite convinced that that that, that is the way to um, go around certain pressures in the market, like, for example, the shortage of skilled labor. It's a massive, massive issue for most uh, SME developers or developers of any size, actually. Um, they're, they're struggling with skilled labor. Uh, and another one is costs as well. Um, with volume should come the cost, uh, even though we're still there or thereabouts in terms of cost parity uh, mm -hmm. with category one at least. Category two in some in many cases can 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 come even below um, traditional, um, and, and we're seeing it on on the early um, feasibility studies that we're doing with our prototype. Um, right, that category two has has a bit of a cost advantage there as well, especially because you can shorten the. Uh, on-site time quite a lot and then you have less implications of your finances you're paying those finances for less months um so 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 it can have a, a role there uh quite interestingly but but yeah it's still it's still a very entrepreneurial sort of environment and with 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 massive failures that like you know last year urban splash or this mm. this last week but before we're recording this uh with lng oh. So what is the reason for um, like industry not having um, having MMC more widely uh, used within within construction? There, there is a, a for the housing, right? That's that everyone is clear about it. There is a demand for housing. Yes. Uh, better quality housing as well. Uh, yeah. MMC seems like they would provide that by uh, mm -hmm. offering manufacturing. Um, yeah, if you can point out a few few areas 
what what are the reasons for for problems with access? So the, 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 it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem there, right? Um, especially if you go for big capex intensive investment on factories, um, you need a, a very reliable pipeline of projects that you can be relying on to keep the feeding the beast, as they call it, right? Mm. And mm -hmm. just 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 really keeping those fixed costs that that that. Um, that, that those massive factories have uh, at, at bay almost, right? Um, so, so there's a problem of pipeline, um, and the pipeline is not there a lot of the times because the, uh, the developers don't know what options are out there, right? They know what they know. They've always worked their way. Um, they know that they can deliver for uh, a certain uh, number of pounds per square meter uh, with their methods and 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 that's it right so that's what one of the things that we're trying to break down with hesty right uh, um, putting them in front of th those options in front of the sme developers very early on in the process right after they have identified a site um, and and explain them why those uh, solutions can be useful for their site uh, in terms of saving them time labor um, carbon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so in, just diving a little bit deeper then into Hesti itself, um, we can get onto the, I guess, the, the product a little bit more. So, um, but how how did you guys come up with the idea? So the the idea came up from that constraint of carbon thirteen, right? Uh, Henry came to carbon thirteen thinking, oh, "Come on, let let's do some super efficient, um, low carbon homes." Let's let's actually build them, right? And and then you come up with this big barrier of the 10 million tons, 160,000 tons mm -hmm. per year. And then you think, how can you be a facilitator? And, and we started talking to a lot of people, um, especially SME builders, but also housing associations, uh, also experts in the field, uh, also other people that are with their own B2B SaaS products are um, targeting the same audience, people like uh, Landtech or Searchland on the kind of sourcing um, the sites for for, for development, um, and coming up with with uh, with with that pinch point, which is uh, the feasibility assessment that some other people are doing. But how do you pair it up with those uh, manufacturers uh, of 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 site uh, how, homes, right? Uh, MMC in general. Um, so, so that's where we come in, right? So, so we will produce, we, we are producing already uh, site feasibility assessments with a kind of a baseline of traditional methods, uh, and then comparing it to to what um, to, to to what can be delivered through category one and two providers. We've half onboarded um, seven um, manufacturers, and we've got like probably another ten in the in the in the pipeline to be onboarded in, into our platform. Um, and the idea is that, and, and the power of Hesti comes from incorporating a lot, lots of data layers, right? So, so, so we'll be incorporating the data. We, we are already presenting data on house prices on the area, on demographics, which types of homes sell better in that area, um, to then pr provide that feasibility assessment, right? Uh, we are providing also the data from from all of the manufacturers, obviously. Um, and as part of the Geovation Accelerator, we can talk a bit more about that. Um, but but we will be incorporating data from the Ordnance Survey and Land Registry as well. So you can have a very clear picture of what can be developed in that area, what's the most efficient way of doing it. Um, also data from from uh, all of the planning authorities. So so, so if you develop a home, a home in Chichester, you'll, you'll know that. Um, the threshold for uh, affordable homes is 11. So if you go over 11, you'll start to need to think about affordable housing, things like that. Um, so, 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 so doing that um, kind of go, no go sort of uh, feasibility study early on um, with me traditional methods and also uh, with, with uh, MMC providers. So yeah, it sounds like a smart platform for developers to choose um, type of development on a particular site um sorry type of construction for a particular site right correct so traditionally i think it, only based on my experience i've got it works like that that the developer small medium sized developer uh, uh, would say that okay i'm gonna build it in timber because i know how timber uh, works how to build it uh, or another one would say okay this will be cavity walls and this is my um uh, number of pounds per square square meter 
Yeah, and that's what I would get. Like, um, I think there will be. It's difficult to uh, to kill this mindset of the developer unless they are shown that there is uh, uh, value added to it in terms of the reduced cost of the construction. Mm-hmm. Do you think that a MM, uh, modern method of construction can be cheaper than traditional ways of, of building? And what are your thoughts on this? Um, it it is cheaper already in some category to, to uh, instances. Category one is still tricky. What you can do is shorten massively the construction times, right? But but we we came to the idea after a very intense customer discovery phase, right? And and when you look at the key pinch points of uh, the target audience, uh, sourcing line is always a problem. Planning is a massive problem for them. Uh, skill labor is a massive, for massive problem. For everyone planning. Yes. <laughs> They're not our favorite people. Uh, Bricklayers are a strong competitor. <laughs> the planners, I think. Uh, um, inflation is another one, right? So so how do we tackle all those pinches, right, if you want? Yeah. Um, and, and with planning, for example, we, we uh, with, with planners being more sensitive to uh, things like sustainability and delivering a, a low impact um, a, um, a scheme or whatever that is, um, then, then, then we believe that by um, providing the SME developer with all the information from the, from the manufacturer, they'll be able to sp- expedite and, and make that planning process much more, much more, uh, much more efficient, right? Skill labor, again, um, if they can avoid um, having to bring in a lot of brick layers, um, then, 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 then that, that, is, that is definitely a benefit for them, right? Um, as I said, you know, it's um, those assessments, accurate assessments, comparison side to side with other options that they don't have the time and all those SME de- developers to research will give them all that research already done for them. Uh, they can choose the most effective and sustainable manufacturers there. So I, I agree with you, Martin. It's, 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 it's a changing mindset of people that have done this for 20 years. Not easy. But um what we've seen from our discussions with them is that they know there's a better way of doing things. It's just that they don't have the time. They don't want to experiment sometimes. They're a bit yeah. risk averse, um, but they, they know that there are better ways. So, so if we can show them the way, um, hopefully uh, we'll, 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 we'll have with that problem of decarbonization of, of, of the environment. of the, of yeah. the building. I think that's the key to unlocking it. Like what, like in our episode, we discussed with um, Ken Semler, who, who is um, big into modular construction is, it's like trying to convince someone that has built three or four, well, this is in the US terms, but three or four homes, turn over a nice business, like have a happy family and doing well to then try and tell them they've got to go and retrain for a year to uh, go and build modular. And so it's a very hard sell. So I think the key to unlocking it is to really like see some success that companies are having and then um, apply it to projects that like these smes are working on because you know as with construction and and any change people don't like taking the risk so you go and do a modular construction project and something goes wrong then they're going to be like oh well i told you so or what is all modulars fault and like the reputation drops as a result absolutely so um hesti uh adria so you guys are um currently working you're, you're in the geovation accelerator is that right that's correct yeah that, that's going to be that's been one of the key wins to date um we went through the process of carbon 13 um unfortunately it was a super competitive cohort and we didn't get the investment from them uh but but then quite 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 almost uh in succession we we got into the geovation accelerator uh, which was amazing for us um it comes with a bit of grant money, which is uh, taking a bit of the pressure of our personal runways, obviously. Uh, it's not a bad thing, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, but most importantly, it comes with all the support from, from the Ordnance Survey and the, the land registry. The Geovation was set up by the Ordnance Survey uh, with the idea of promoting startups to use or, or helping startups to use that data. They've got a lot of data, obviously, uh, the Ordnance Survey. Uh, and then land registry a couple of, of, of years ago became again uh, became their, their their official partner as well, right? So so we can have access to who owns what uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in around the UK, right? Um, and yeah, it's all the support, um, free office space in London as well, which is not nice. a bad thing. Yeah, that's uh, good. with free coffee and free fruit, so so uh, oh, that's oh. always a pack. <laughs> do they like? Do they, do they uh, partner you up with like mentors and? Uh, 
Experts. Definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it's quite a hands-on for the first six months, hands-off for the for the last six months, uh, so total of a year. Um, but on the first six months, you get people helping you with marketing, with sales, um, somebody coaching you. Uh, obviously, the support to incorporate all the data, technical support. Uh, you can even. Uh, get some of the guys from 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 the urban survey or land registry to to code for you. Uh, it comes at a price, uh, mm -hmm. but but they do know their their data layers very well. So 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 we might use that as well uh, as part of our development team when when we're speaking more about that kind of mapping layers or or, or property layers um, that they can come and help us. Mm -hmm. okay. So where are you guys currently at? Uh, is there a product or you you still coming up with a product? Yes, as I said, with with that kind of low code noodle um, software solution plus a lot of ChatGPT, JavaScript, um, uh, then then we have we have now a prototype that works. It's spitting out numbers. Uh, we're now in the process of validating the numbers with all of the suppliers that we have onboarded uh, and. By June, we'll start doing um, some beta testing with a few SME developers that we have contacted that, that, that are quite friendly and quite keen on trying it. Um, but also, we're looking at housing associations also because um, if you, the Homes England mandates that if you want to access to their money, 25% of, uh, of, of, of it has to go into modern methods of construction specifically, right? Uh, and and there are rumors that that percentage might go up to 40% even. Um, so you have a housing That's association like, like Raven Housing Trust uh, in my neck of the woods using uh, Boutique Modern down down in New Haven to, to deliver their, their category one homes, right? Um, so so it's quite substantial uh, in that sense. So, so if we can help housing associations as well with that early feasibility studies and connecting them with the right uh with the right manufacturers then 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 it could be a, a good market for us as well yeah all right so i just want to wanted to ask one more about that so on the on your pitch deck you mentioned that there is uh, which is available on your website as well uh that you are targeting uh, developers who deal with uh between five and fifty uh plots a year something like that yes and correct yes why not why not to target uh, larger developers because it seems like this uh, sme developer it's like a full of potential problems um, <laughs> um there, there, there are a couple of reasons for that uh one is that um we know the the audience a bit better than other audiences we've spoken to more of them um, we know that products like Landtech and Searchland work very well for them. Uh, yeah. We see ourselves as the next step on that value chain, right? Once you have identified maybe five or 10 sites around the area you want to develop, you can bring those sites into Hesti and do the feasibility studies uh, with, with, with more methods of construction through us, right? Um, I know well, one of the co-founders of, 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 of Landtech Andrew Moist uh, has given us a lot of time, very generously. One of the things I was mentioning at the beginning, uh, and and we know the unit economics for them could work quite well for us uh, yeah, yeah. if if we can get close to what the what what Landtech is is getting in that right. We we, we our business model is a bit to be SaaS for the moment, oh, wow. uh, even though quite a few people have told us we should invert the the, the problem, but but we're still sticking to our initial hunch. Until reality punches us in the face, probably at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, uh, it's it's the developer that would pay for those feasibility studies and being presented with some options, curated options of um, more than methods of construction uh, manufacturers that that can that can deliver for that specific site, right? Um, it could be that you know that other revenue streams down the line could be things like insurance or mortgages or finances or even paper leads for the manufacturers. Things like that we will be exploring once we have uh, the critical mass of uh, developers on one side, right? Uh, but to your question, Martin, about why SMEs, it's more that more more that we know the the, the pinch points. We've spoken to quite a lot of them. We believe we have something that can solve their problems. Bigger uh, developers tend to have a lot of in-house teams already that are doing a lot of the work themselves internally. Uh, SME developers tend to have um, maybe a, a well-known architect that 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 
will do that work for a small fee or, or sometimes for free if, if they're passing enough work, right? So I, making that much more efficient, that, that, that process there much quicker and, and, and cheaper if, if they're paying something to the, to the architect, right? Well, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, Martin, you had a question written down here about... Yeah, yeah go on. Which one? Your <laughs> second long one. Second long one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we already touched on this, right? Yeah. So about so actually, maybe we can we'll cut this bit that I'm uh, stuttering or however you call it. <laughs> but you know, so one of the points that uh, are very important when building new homes, especially in in terms of uh, modern method of constructions, are structural warranties. Is that without one. Um, the buyer of the property cannot get a mortgage usually. So that's th- that's the problem I come across a few times uh, in my career. And recently, even we spoke with someone uh, who runs uh, engineering business that they have like 70 engineers design MMC for manufacturers. Um, and and it's very difficult to to get these pro- the projects uh, pipeline of the projects because warranty providers like NHBC uh, they are not accepting certain types of projects because of claims and previous history of claims. <clears throat> so, yeah, what are your thoughts on this? Like, yeah, but perception is is very bad, and, and as you said, you know uh, in, um, that that that. Um, insurance is, is not always easy. Uh, the manufacturers have gone through this painful project to change the perception and, and to get those warranties and, and, and those. Uh, um, we, we only putting on the system the ones that do have uh, have gone through the verification processes. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, And then we show there, you know, even um, which mortgage providers, some mortgage providers sometimes are not keen on, 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 on providing a mortgage for a new house in certain types of... Um, of MMC, so 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 yeah, we we are we are putting okay. Um, we know that uh, some people have got mortgages from uh, from Barclays, from from whoever that is uh, for for these projects uh, in the past. So 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 we are curating that very carefully. It's still a problem, and there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, but people like Ilka Homes, for example, the biggest category one manufacturer together with Top Hat, depending on how you, co- co- uh, how you cut it, um, they, they all have those insurances. They all have gone through all those fire tests and, and all of the necessary um, uh, accreditations to be able to get those mortgages, to be able to get those insurances. So, mm-hmm. okay. Um, so I was just, I was really just going to try and move on to like, obviously, like one of the key problems you're tackling, um, mm-hmm. Adria, which is, a big problem in 21st century in the first world, should I say, yeah. which is carbon reduction. Um, and it seems like, it seems to me, and I don't know if, if other people get this uh, kind of vibe, but the world is not taking carbon reduction like, seriously enough and, and the, the, the dangers it um, poses to us. And like, even if we were to uh, get this right in, in the first world, like I said earlier, you still have countries like China and even Africa who are heav- heavily reliant on um, fuel sources like like coal. So, um, what, what's your views on the plans and like how how carbon reduction is generally, um, I guess, not necessarily from a construction, but from your your experience and background. Given that I know you you like working with carbon thirteen and that kind of thing, you, you you're quite involved with this stuff. Yeah, my my point of view that is the objective from any company trying to tackle this problem should be that to make the sustainable choice the default choice, right? Um, to make it the best possible, and and therefore it makes no sense to do anything else. And we're seeing it already in other industries when that happens, right? Uh, in the energy industry, solar panels and 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 wind are now cheaper than 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 getting coal, for example, right? Um, or the car manufacturing as well, you know, the 
prices of, of electric cars have gone down so much that it almost doesn't make sense to buy a non-electric car, right? And even even in the in the food industry as well, we're seeing it more and more, right? That the healthy choice is usually the the, the, the low carbon choice, et cetera, et cetera. So so there, there's that problem there of perception. But if you make it um, the obvious choice, then 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 you get through that problem, right? And I think you know even you're, you're absolutely right that you know we cannot do it by ourselves in the UK or in Western Europe. Um, when even in America, you could argue that uh, there's less sensitivity about about the project, uh, the, the the problem, right? But um, I think we can and should we should be leading the way from here, right? Creating the economies of scales for other countries to adopt, right? That that was a problem with with uh, with solar, for example. Once there was enough manufacturers um, doing it right, then the prices uh, collapsed, right? So so hopefully. We can get similar similar approaches on on this, and it's things as well. If you compare it to other problems that the world has faced in the in the past, right? Uh, even um, you could have argued, right? What's the point of the UK abolishing slavery when yeah. there's so many other countries doing slavery still now, yeah. right? Uh, but but it, the UK showed the way to the other countries, right? Being the first to 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 to, to, like to that, abolish yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's about leading the way, and we should leading be, the way, be exactly. proud of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. All right. Uh, okay, I got a question, very general question about the collaboration in uh, business. So <laughs> you, Henry, and Simon. So mm -hmm. how did you guys um, meet each other? Obviously, mm -hmm. you mentioned that it was through... Uh, Henry um, through Carbon 13, yes. Yes, yes. and then... Um, what what are your thoughts on collaboration in the business? Because you're trying to achieve uh, great goals, which is create a company, tech company, and it's not easy. Um, and everyone is from kind of different uh, background. And I think from structural civil engineering. Yeah. Uh, so how does one do that to um, that is able to uh, create a business with other people? What what are your thoughts on collaboration? So yeah, as you said, Henry and I met through Carbon 13. We didn't know each other a year ago. We met in about September last year. We started working about November. Um, with Simon, our history comes, uh, comes, comes a bit longer than that. We, he's local to me. We met in one of those networking events that he was organizing, actually. Um, but uh, and, and since then, we've been good friends. We were doing a weekly accountability meeting um, with him. And then at some point I was talking about Hesti and about what we were building with Henry. And it's like, well, you, you do have a prop tech uh, company already, right? Called Padma. They, they do um, they, they 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 do a software to help um, landlords managing their buy to let uh, properties, right? Or finding them in in the first instance and then then manage them, right? Um, and so he had lots of data that he had been collecting and all that. He's a proper CTO geek. Right, proper proper developer, uh, <laughs> software developer. Uh, I mean, not 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 home yeah. developer. Um, so 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 yeah, he accepted after some arm twisting to to to, to give us four hours a week uh, or so, and and to give us a lot of his data for free as well for the moment. I don't say it too loud. Maybe he'll start us charging us uh, <laughs> charging us uh, quite soon. Uh, but yeah, to to your question about how you work together, um, I, I think it was. For me, uh, there was a lot of gut feeling, right? When when you are on carbon thirteen, you're under pressure. Phase one of of, of the program, um, it's only six weeks in which you meet. Uh, we met a hundred people each, right? Um, and you have to take a decision in six weeks of who you're going to work for with. And there was a lot of gut instinct there as well. But but what I was looking for is. Uh, a to be uh, sure that we were aligned in our mission, right? And it was easy because Carbon Thirteen did a lot of that work for us, right? That they, they had a good selection process in which they only let people in that are there for the right reasons, um, but then very complementary on the skill sets, right? So, 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 so we 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 got that. Um, and very early on, what we did as well with Henry, we went through a questionnaire. Uh, that you can find very easily on, on if you Google it, but it's called uh, 50 Questions to Explore with a Potential Co-Founder. Um, I like it. With it, it, it's almost, it feels like dating, really, uh, at that point, uh, yeah. right? <laughs> honestly. Uh, <laughs> and, and I believe, to be honest, that those 50 questions are inspired by another similar thing when you're looking for a 
person or partner rather than a, 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 a business partner. Um, but yeah, we did those 50 questions going on a walk. That, that was really cool as well, right? Because you're not looking each other in the eyes, you're looking in the same direction. You, mm. you kind of, and because you're walking, doing a bit of exercise, you know, things yeah. flow a bit better, right? Um, and then, yeah, through those questions, you clarify things like your personal circumstances, your personal runway, how much can you afford to be there without earning a salary, the strengths, the weaknesses, the roles uh, that we, we uh, naturally gravitate towards because you have to wear many hats when there's only two of you, or in this case, two and uh, two and two and two point two maybe, uh, counting the point two of 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 of, of Simon. Uh, and the vision of the company, what, what do you think about team culture, things like that, right? You go over those 50 questions uh, and then you have a very good picture. And, it, and because there were no massive red flags, but actually quite the opposite, right? Lots of green flags, if you want. Uh, we decided to partner up then and, and so far so good. Sometimes I do worry that we haven't had any major arguments yet <laughs> so so it's like yeah. come on we should fight a bit that's more, good right? I, don't, I don't think you should go searching for them i think uh, they'll come when they're when needed but it sounds like a good thing do you use any like um any other frameworks for keeping things on track between you like perhaps this that could be the answer as to why you guys haven't had a massive fight yet well yeah. to be honest with you we've, we've been uh now um in a in a state of doing 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 and and i think the geovation structure will help us on being a bit more strategic because now it's like, come on, we need to do something. We need to put something in front of the of, of the developers. Do 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 rather than stop and think, right? So, so one of the first things we've done with geovation is uh, to to work on a work plan for the first six hands-on months that we're going to do with geovation. Uh, and and you know having to think six months in advance for a startup that that feels like ages, you know, yeah. and, and it helps you taking that step back and say, okay, where, where do we actually want to be in six months? So yeah, okay, nice. And uh, one other thing um, you do do address crowdfunding. So yes. you are a crowdfunding consultant, um, having I believe you successfully done a done a crowdfund for. A, at least one company was it maybe two yeah it's, so I've, I've done quite a few really um yeah. my first one was with crumbs brewing it was a rewards based crowdfunding um so basically giving beer in exchange for the money <laughs> so pre-selling the beer um sounds great it, it was great it was it was so much fun i can tell you that um then, then i did another one for a cafe more kind of more altruistic sort of feel good kind of reward if you want um but then I, I've done a few others, which is more kind of equity crowdfunding, so giving part of your company. And, and mm -hmm. funnily enough, the last one I've been uh, involved, even not too hands-on, but was, was again for Crumbs. So Crumbs has gone through the reward space crowdfunding and it's then through the equity uh, crowdfunding with Cedars in that case. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Is it good for, uh, you think it's good for a construction tech company? Um, I'm going to give the consultants answer. Depends. <laughs> uh, it, it depends a lot, right? I, th I think construction is a, is a less obvious um, industry to do crowdfunding. Um, Why? The, the, the industries that works quite well is B2C uh, in general, basically uh. because you have, um, and, and especially if you're purpose or mission-led, right? then it works amazingly well, right? Because people think, oh, I'm, mm. I'm here not for, uh, not just for the money, but because we're doing something good to change the world, right? Um, and for example, uh, the, the obvious uh, example is Brudock, right? Uh, they, they, their first crowdfunding campaigns, they were almost the inventors of equity crowdfunding, Brudock. Uh, and their first campaigns were more about, let's change the industry, fight the bland beer, uh, mm. beer can be so much better, um, et cetera, right? Um, they already had a community of people um, that could back them early on and that were very kind of invested already, even before the, the crowdfunding campaign. Um, so for construction companies, having more kind of a B2B or, or less kind of contact with the direct uh, consumer is a bit trickier. There are examples of, of people that have done it very well, um, though. Um, but but I, I think 
it, you need to before before you can see the crowdfunding. If you're only doing it for the money, I would argue that there are other ways that are kind of more efficient to get the money. Um, but if you have also that ambition of getting your community engaged uh, and your community involved with you and 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 feeling that kind of because the numbers are there, right? Um, it's very obvious with fintechs with um, with 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 product companies. The change of um, customer from being just a customer to being a, an investor as well, uh, in terms of metrics of engagement, of um, referrals, things like that, just go through the roof, right? People that mm. are an investor uh, will talk to that product to their friends. Will will we'll really will really promote almost being a, an ambassador for you, right? Uh, in a way. So so yeah, I, I would say if. If you want to top up um, an angel round with a bit of people in your community that are going to put a smaller tickets, but do you feel that okay, maybe fifty to a hundred people already? I know that that will 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 be happy to put a hundred quid, a thousand quid, something like that, small small amount of money or relatively small in the investment world. Uh, then go for it. Yeah, um, it, it has it has that kind of marketing. Angle as well, right? Viral uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Okay. Looks like about the right time to move into off topic. Martin, you go first. Yeah. So I have a bit of a weird question, as I usually have. <laughs> but, like when I listen to you, you sound like a very wide ranging person. So, um, which is great. I love it. And I think you have something like uh, I would call commercial focus. Um, how does one develop commercial focus? Um, I think there's only one real way, right, of, of com developing that commercial focus is talking to a lot of customers. And for example, in, in Crumbs, we would go at the very beginning to every single opportunity that we had to go to a, a food fest or a music festival or something like that and talk to as many people as you can, ask them about the day, ask them a bit of, with the mom's test, right? Uh, how was your day? What was your highlight? This and that, and almost get a good rounded context picture of, of how they feel and how they they act and why they take the decisions they take, right? So I would say that, that, that commercial angle is, is just being curious with people and, and, and really ask those questions that not only the obvious ones for your product that you want to sell, but also you learn so much asking, you know, questions that seem unrelated to to, mm. to 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 what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to to do right so, so just yeah, context that, that my, exactly yeah and uh on that martin said about being well-rounded and obviously you, you you we mentioned it before but you've been involved in a lot of things and i can see in the background you also have a piano and i think that's a bass guitar is it? it's a bass guitar you cannot see there's there's two more guitars over there uh, okay so surrounded by instruments and i'm only lately <laughs> how does someone stay curious uh it comes very natural to me i, I don't know it comes so natural to me you know i i i listen to a ton of podcasts usually a bit too fast um, <laughs> give, us, give us one or two names for X speed. <laughs> for X speed, no, I don't go quite to extreme. Like some people, I know some people that do that. But, but yeah. give, us, go... give, us the, give us the place number two and three. So first one is bricks and bytes. Yeah. So. Of course, yeah, yeah, that, that's number <laughs> one. And I've, I've listened to a few of yours, definitely. Um, lately, what am I listening to? Uh, I'm listening to Rich Roll quite a lot. Rich Roll podcast. I'm listening uh, the, the the usual Lex Friedman, Tim Ferriss, yeah. um, a bit more unusual podcast that I like as well. There's one called Meditative Story. Um, it's more about stories of famous people. They they bring actors, singers, and th things like that about their lives. Uh, but it has a lot of kind of meditation sort of attached to it, uh, which is really good. Um, mm. re really enjoy that one. Uh, really good storytelling. Um, Nice. What's it called? Uh, meditative story. Meditative story sounds yeah. uh sounds like infusing two kind of like different things, totally different things. Yes, together. Yes. Uh, it is uh, highly recommended. Yeah. Yes. And then I, yeah. then I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Uh, a while yeah. ago, I was really into kind of more uh, business books. 
but lately I've done quite a lot of biographies. They're, they're really yeah. fun, especially if they're read by, by the author. Um, yeah. I love them. I love them in that case, yeah. What's your favorite book that you can like say, no matter what the cost of the fact that you just chose it as the best one, but what's the what's something that comes to your head when you are about to recommend a book? Um, from the latest ones I've read, I would say if you're into crowdfunding, things like that, uh, the queen of crowdfunding is Amanda Palmer. And she's got an amazing book that she reads and she also sings in the book and she also <laughs> is amazing. So I would recommend the audiobook version. It's called The Art of Asking. Mm. Uh, and it goes as well with, the, with one of the topics we've covered, right? Of asking favors, of asking yeah. uh, people love to help. Yeah. Do, do not deny the, that, that, that help, right? If, if somebody offers you something, just take it graciously. Why not? You know, they, people like it. Yeah, sure. Okay, Adria. Um, so thanks for coming on and sharing your story of Hesti today. Um, where can people find out more about you? So LinkedIn, um, I spend an inordinate time of, uh, in LinkedIn. An inordinate amount of time there. Uh, LinkedIn is a good way. Uh, there's only one of me um <laughs> okay. and linkedin so far so it's a very That's quite cool find me. <laughs> yes uh um and then as well if you want to know more about hesty we've got a website uh hesty.co.uk um by the way a cool a cool story about the name of, of our company um really? it's difficult to to name any company and any, any projects yeah. but we went for uh the greek goddess of the home and hearth that oh, was hestia my. Oh, yeah, and we got the A. So, there is very a good. company called Hestia, I think. Yes, yes. There are a few. And uh, after choosing the name and being a bit in love with it, uh, then we realized that there was people with similar names. Way, yeah. But we thought, yeah, we, we, we're too invested now. So <laughs> oh, Shame. All right. Thanks, Adria. No worries. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for, for having me. Really thoughtful questions. I really enjoyed the conversation. Us too. Thank you, Adria.